Welcome to the Limitless Energy Podcast. I'm Dennis Ferris, and my guests today are Emily and Shane of Arbor Season. And first, let me state that Arbor Season is a number of things. It's it's the name of your band. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the name of your channel. Mm-hmm. It's the name of your bus. <laughs> so you guys live in a schoolie, and you travel around playing shows off grid. Yeah. Is that accurate? Absolutely. Okay, which came first? The schoolie, the band, the, the channel? Hmm. So the, the band, the band <laughs> out of all of those things, the band, um, but we actually started, um, our story goes way back, but we were called Shane and Emily first. That, that was, was our band, band name. name. And okay. then this is preschooly. Preschooly. Yeah. yeah. We yeah, were pre-schooly. in an RV. Well, first we were living in apartments and then we got an RV and we traveled around in that. So that was when we started hitting the road, playing at universities, different things like that, and realized that we were paying rent at our apartments and like we were never there we were always gone we were like this is really dumb so then it was shane's idea to get an rv okay so you you had a band what sorry what city was it in it was in tampa tampa yeah Yeah. (laughs) okay so you lived you had a place in tampa you're traveling around the country or around Mm -hmm. the east coast yeah so we got uh we did like disney twice a week for about four years and other beach bars and restaurants but then there was a college agency that reached out to us uh, a college booking agency so we would do these conferences and then they would fly us out to conferences and colleges all over the country so we did like a hundred colleges in like a year and a half so we were (laughs) always touring always traveling and so we were just paying all this money to live in Tampa and And we we were never there we like weren't even really living in Tampa it was not it wasn't great (laughs) so we're like but it wasn't really a thought at first and then I was just like oh I went to a gig and there was this guy that had an RV and he traveled the country (laughs) yes and he would fix other people's stoves and things like that like like restaurants and that was his job so he'd travel all over fixing stoves and he's like do you want a tour of my RV and I'm like okay so I went he offered you his RV to tour in yeah. Oh, no, no uh, just no. look at it. <laughs> just tour, look tour at it. Of he was RV. really cool, but not okay, that cool. I would take my RV okay. and just travel around. I, I, I was surprised by that. Okay, he gave Whoa. you a little yes. tour of his RV. Okay. And when he lifted up his mattress, his bed in the back, and like all of his clothes were under it, that was it. I'm like, I have to do this. And Shane's then, dream has always been to be like Franklin the turtle and just like have everything he needs like in his backpack everywhere he goes. Yep. And then I saw this couple called Gone with the Winds and, uh, they're my heroes. And so I watched all their videos and I said, Emily, I, I'm buying an RV. We were dating and in my mind I was like, well, I'm not gonna live in an RV, so I guess we're gonna break up. <laughs> yeah, cause I, I had my apartment, she had her apartment. And then when I, I got the RV, cause we're not married, so I got the RV anyway. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so never gonna do this. <laughs> and uh, now here we are, a bus later. All right, thanks yeah. to the appliance repair man. I know, yeah. Creighton. Creighton. I wonder what he's up to now. I wonder if he's still fixing stoves. Like, <laughs> Creighton from Tampa. Creighton and Gone with the Winds. He I don't even know where he was from. He looked like he was probably from California. He was just traveling around, and he was in Tampa. Oh, yeah. You he should was, look him up on Facebook. He was like a surfer bro kind of guy. Yes, yes, okay, he so was. Okay, so you got an RV, yeah. and but you weren't both living in it yet. Correct. No, not till we got married, which was probably like, like six months after he got the RV. Um and it's so funny because like I was totally against it. I mean, my whole family, we we almost like had an intervention with Shane. We were like, "No, you did have an intervention." <laughs> you did. We were like, was... "This is a terrible a terrible idea because he used to break apartment leases all the time. And we're like, "You're just going to like get this big loan and then you're going to get sick of it and you're going to want to break out of it, but you're going to be stuck with it. It's just not practical." And Shane was like, "I'm I don't care. I'm doing it anyways." And we were like, "You're so crazy. What's wrong with you?" And he was totally right. What kind of RV was it? It was a Class C uh, Forest River Sunseeker. Um, it had no slide outs and every time I wanted to do anything, I had to turn on a generator um, <laughs> yeah. cause you know, you have your house batteries, but it only runs your lights and maybe your, your like water pump, but you couldn't like, you couldn't, uh, watch TV. You couldn't r- r- do anything in your outlets. Yeah. You couldn't use your outlets unless the generator was on or you were plugged into shore power. And we lived like that for almost four years. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Always running a generator and always trying to get it fixed. And that generator was always breaking. It was, seriously, it was horrible. I can't believe how much money we sank into that terrible generator. I think we had it repaired probably six times over four years. Like big, like $2,000 repairs. And it's Did you ask Creighton? 
<laughs> no. Yeah, like Creighton. What do you do? Yeah. Well, he had one of those really nice Class A's, like really big and yeah. new. Ours, ours was, was used. not. Ours was the only one that Shane could get approved for because he was Canadian with no credit history. We even had to have somebody co-sign with him, which is another story because we met that guy at a bar, and the day after that, he co-signed with Shane. To get now we RV. do the Dave Ramsey stuff, so, so we don't do, we that, don't do that stuff anymore. But. But we're anyway. always thankful for Brian. Yes. Thank you, Brian, if you're listening. Thanks, okay. Brian. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm trying to keep this straight now. So you, you lived in an apartment. Uh, you uh, started a band together, and then you were touring around, first without an RV, you were flying around the country, and then you decided you were gone so much, you bought the, the RV. Yep. And then when did you move in with him? When we got married. Like, okay. the night that we got married. So that was, like, a few months later? <laughs> it was, like, six to eight months after he got the RV. So, yeah, he was traveling. He was living in it by himself for a while, and I was just shaking my Meet, head. Meeting him at shows? Yeah. Like, he'd show him. up with the gear, and then you'd... Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would take the RV to every single gig, because that was, like, the dream. Like, imagine going to a gig, and then on your breaks, you just walk outside and, like, play Super Smash Brothers on your... Which I, you never did, which but I that never was the did. idea. But it was the idea. The fact that I could do it. That's all you need is the, all the need. knowledge so, that you So he can. drive and you fly into the show? Um, so, the, so okay, when we were doing colleges and stuff, I would ride with him. And we would, like, take friends with us to just hang out, have fun, stuff like that. Her and dad came on a lot of trips. My dad did. He used to be, like, our, like, business consultant, administrator dude. And it was really awesome. But then when we were doing our gigs in Tampa, like, he would take his RV. And I would drive my car over from my apartment. And we would meet up there and... Yep, they would all pile in the RV, and then we'd call those, like, we go for, like, a lot of six-week to, they were usually around six-week trips to yeah. do, like, uh, cross-country all over. Like, we'd have one show in, like, Nevada, and then three days later, we had to be in Pennsylvania, so we'd, like, the RV we just We would zigzag. We did 20,000 miles in seven weeks one time. That was crazy. That was insane. With another couple and another friend of ours, all of us in the RV. For seven weeks, 20,000 miles. And I was looking at wedding rings for her. She had no idea. Me and my guy friends were, like, super excited. And then she was thinking about breaking up with me the whole time. Because I didn't like, want to live in an RV. <laughs> and so I had no idea. And then when we dropped her off at her apartment and I went back into the RV and parked at the Walmart or something, um, she... He, like, shut my door and I missed him. And I was like, dang it, I guess I have to live in an RV if I want to be with Shane. I proposed, like, three days later. <laughs> Literally two days after that. So it was really good timing, honestly. <laughs> so did did you when you met? Was it after you started playing together? Did you did you get together after that or? Yeah. yeah. So I was touring uh, with other musicians and other acts and things like that, and then I started doing like cover band stuff in the Tampa Bay area, and then I met Emily around that time, and she was. You were doing cover stuff after we met. Oh, that's true, because I was on tour with mm -hmm. another band, and then. Uh, I met Emily, but then I started doing like cover band stuff by myself for like like a month or two. Maybe. And then Emily's working at Cracker Barrel, and I said, "Hey, how much are you making at Cracker Barrel? I'll pay you that." <laughs> I was like, "Not a lot," and he was like, "Sure, it sounds great." <laughs> and then she jumped on stage, and we played this one song by Johnny Cash, and she sang with me. It was the very first song we sang at a gig, and people screamed and cheered and like. Ah! They never cheered like that for just. They never Shane. cheered like that for just me, and so I said, Emily. You need to join this band. So we were friends for three years first. Before um, we And even I hear you play guitar dating. too. So maybe we should like play that song and you should play with us. You wanna do it? Right now. In do this it, interview. Dennis, do it, Dennis, do should it. Should we do it right now? Okay. All right. Yeah, let's play that All song. Alright, sweet. Right now. We're gonna play that. Um this we is usually... a, a Johnny Cash song. It yeah. Is. So okay. in a in an unconventional way. And then uh This is the Arbor Season version. Arbor Season slash Dennis. I got your copy. That All I right, stole from you. my friend Johnny. All right. You ready? <laughs> oh, yeah. This is Donnie's version. <laughs> Here we go. And this is... Uh, Folsom Prison Blues. Folsom Prison Blues. Right. Yeah. So we go. Oh, yeah, the intro thingy. Yeah. I hear the train are coming and it's rolling around the bend. Ooh. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when But I'm stuck in Folsom prison And time keeps dragging on Seriously, look at this guy go! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I hear that whistle On down to San Antonio Nice! 
Just a baby, no, my mama told me, son, always be a good boy, don't you ever play with guns. And I shot a bear in Juno, just to watch him die. If there was ever a time to say Reno, I we're in Reno, Reno right oh. now. <laughs> oh, when I hear that whistle blowing, oh, I hang my head and cry. I bet there's rich folks eating in a fancy dining car They're probably drinking Starbucks and smoking big cigars And I know I had it coming <laughs> I know I can't be free no. oh, oh, those people keep moving And that's what tortures me Get so dead in Making batteries and music. <laughs> Making music and batteries. batteries. That's what we do. Well, <laughs> thanks for that. Um, no, you? thank you. So, do um, you want to join our band? We actually have an extra bunk bed right now. So, <laughs> hey, we I'm just, just built it. It's only like this big, but yeah. if you curl it's up. It's technically can... for a two year old, but you could probably fit in there. So. Got it. Yeah. Well, I should probably clear that with my wife and kids. Oh, damn um, it. Yes. So, speaking of which, <laughs> yes. you guys are on the road, you're playing shows, and you had kids. Yes, we did. So how did that work? Oh man, it was. I mean, crazy. I know how it worked. But I mean, like, <laughs> oh, okay. how did how did oh I see how did it how do, how do you manage to do that with two young kids in the in the school? It's so I think this is like the thing that might set us apart the most from like uh, some other people that travel because like it started in Florida. We had our son, and um, Shane was still doing four hour cover gigs, but we knew that if we kept doing that, like. He was either going to start making less because he was going to have to do solo stuff or he'd have to hire someone else to play with him. So then he started working with this college booking agency, which really helped out a lot. And then As a booking agent this time. Yeah. yeah. And then we started doing house shows primarily just from contacts from people that we met at like Disney and stuff like that. And that was like our dream because house concerts are like they're just so much more fun it's like one hour of our original music we get to tell the stories behind our songs it's an intimate setting you get to like really spend time with people and so we did that for the first year of our son's life just the three of us he would like sit in a high chair next to us while we would play and we would like hand him snacks while we and he was so chill and then he turned one and he was not chill anymore no and <laughs> this girl that we knew in florida she just came up to me one day and she was like you need a nanny and I was like yes I do <laughs> and she's like well I'm I'm married I want to have my own kids but I've never gone anywhere so I want to travel before I start having kids so I'll come be your nanny for free 
and just like you know travel with you guys and i'll watch your kid while when, you do shows when your boy was one he was one and i was like are you serious and she was like yeah so she traveled with us for like six months and full time on the road full time, full on, the time road. on the road her yeah. husband came out a couple times to like meet up with her and hang out and we would all hang out together it was it was really interesting and so we were like okay so this worked out great but we can't ask anyone else to be our nanny for free <laughs> so we worked out like what we felt like was a really good system for being able to like pay a nanny but also not put ourselves in like a really bad position so from there we've just like reached out to people that we know like I've had friends from my childhood come be our nanny um friends of friends you know there's like a little bit of a screening process that they have to go through and it has to be something that we both feel peace about for sure but we've had I think a total of seven nannies over the course of the last three years now I can't imagine <laughs> like it's hard enough to find a nanny and someone you trust but someone who's also willing to go out and be on the road with you that's yeah that's yeah. tough it's been surprisingly not I mean it's definitely been work Emily's done all the work on the back end, but it's been easier than I think we thought it would be yeah because there's a lot of people that are like oh, I would love to come travel with you and not just that but like we pay for all their expenses. It's like free travel at that I point. I cook them. Could cook them. I cook for them. We cook them we if feed they're not them. good, you know. You know, and it's like not a great fit for everybody. Like some nannies have been like, this was really cool. I'm glad that I did it. I don't know if I would do it again because like it looks different um, from the side of like looking at social media than it does actually like being in it because on social media we're posting all the fun, exciting things that we're doing, but there's a lot – of downtime and there's mm -hmm. it's a small space and you've got three adults and two kids in a bus but like everyone has been so great our kids have loved all of our nannies we've had friends also that like lived in a camper and traveled themselves like full-time and they came around with us and she watched our kids and her husband played electric guitar with us they're our best friends we love you Lena and Gianni <laughs> so we've had all different kinds of nannies like Seriously, all different kinds. <laughs> so let's get into the social media aspect then. So you're, you're musicians, you're on the road, you've got kids, but you're also influence. Would you consider yourself in influencers? Maybe like mm. up and coming. I, don't know, I think we need to know mm. what that term means because we have some friends. Mean? All of our friends are definitely influencers because mm -hmm. they all have all these. All of our friends are they influencers. Have all these like amazing <laughs> followings and all this stuff. We're, we're just like, we're, I feel like we're being adopted by all these people. It's true. You know they're what I mean? really nice. They're, and they're helping us like grow our numbers and stuff. But like on the ground level, I think that we've st started to get into that market, like getting sponsorships for like awesome stuff. Like coffee and well, I, I have, and <laughs> I have to imagine as musicians it's it works pretty well together. So you're you're getting a following that way, but also people follow you because they like your music. Yeah. And, right? I it's mean, a mixed yeah. bag. Like our followers are they're either people that like our music or people that like the bus. And usually if they're one then they end up being both later mm -hmm. on because it's all yeah. mixed in together on one account. I have to throw this out, one of the first influencers we worked with were a, a couple a musician couple uh called driving and vibing uh, kyle and Drive. olivia i don't know if you do you know that sounds really are? familiar um, we've know. probably seen them on instagram watch they're yeah. like our best friends we, we don't even know names. we're like so dumb they're, well they're they had they had a little girl now they're off the road so they okay. don't do it anymore okay. but but uh i was actually wondering how they were going to do it and they i guess they stopped but Mm. You, you are actually doing it with now you have two kids right yeah so we have a four-year-old son and then a two-year-old little girl that is crazy <laughs> that's crazy I mean, it's the uh, only way we've ever done it though like our kids have never lived in a house they've always been on the road so it's just kind of like what we know it's the only way that we've ever raised kids i think it makes it a lot easier in that regard because we don't you know we, we don't have anything to compare it to you know mm -hmm. it's just what we do and i mean our kids have a great time our son has like friends all over the country that he likes to go see he kind of like has a girlfriend a little bit i'm not sure if i'm okay with that but we only see her once a year so it's fine <laughs> so what happens uh when they're school age are they are you gonna homeschool or? yeah and i always wanted to homeschool i was homeschooled okay. and so i'm like I'm kind of okay. A fan so you're of kind it. of comfortable with this, then? Yeah, actually. totally. Okay. Um, like I was homeschooled, not in a bus or anything like that. But my mom was. Your amazing. house was kind of a small as a bus, though. Wasn't it? <laughs> it was my first house that I grew up in was a trailer that was not much bigger than our bus. But my mom was like the most amazing teacher and like so good at just 
teaching all of us at our own pace and like finding the right curriculums and being consistent with it so we weren't like just running around in nature hopefully learning stuff like we were really doing school she kept track of stuff and so she's like my pinnacle of like okay when our son is like five which is in six months I really want to start doing like a schedule and she's going to be the person I go to because she knows all about it so I'm ready for it okay so no no signs of slowing down or stopping right you're, you're going to keep growing no. the channel yeah. you're gonna yeah, record so you're bit. writing music now right you're writing and recording always yeah yep so we got three mm -hmm. albums out already and then we're working on our fourth one currently yeah and, so exciting. Um, yeah so we got music on spotify itunes and all those kind of things and i think that when and if it's time to stop we'll like we'll know it i mean in the hopefully not too distant future we do want to get some property in missouri where i'm from and build a tiny house that's a place for us to kind of like go back and land in because we have a great community there i still have some family there we love to visit and um but still travel most of the year and then rent the tiny house kind of whenever we're on the road so we can still travel but maybe not only have to travel mm -hmm. full time so We'll see though. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? That's we're not we're not in any rush to do any make any changes. Like we're really content with what we have now. Yeah, I think if we start seeing it becoming an issue for our kids, that's something yes. that we would consider. Absolutely. Um, cause, that's know, the only thing that would make me want to stop at this point if it was really a problem. Like every now and then, our son will be like, "Mommy." are we going to get a house that doesn't drive? <laughs> and I'm like, but dude. I have not heard him say that. He's only said it twice, and it's never like he's upset about it, but he'll ask me, and I'll be like, I think someday we will. And he'll be like, when we do, we should get a really big garage for our bus to park in. And I'm like, that's a great idea. <laughs> This kid's got ideas. Is, is he a musician at all? Is he oh, yeah. to play anything? He's oh, taught yeah. himself how to sing harmonies, like literally on his own. Like he'll be listening to nursery rhymes, and he's just like, harmonizing with them and i'm like i did not teach him that nope and so like well <laughs> he'll get on the piano and he'll like find like if there's a song that he knows he'll pick out the notes and find them if he plays the wrong notes he fixes it i mean i don't want to be like, a braggy parent but he's only four i think that's kind of impressive it's crazy i couldn't do that till i was like five yeah and he plays the ukulele <laughs> he plays the ukulele and sings with it and it's so cute it's crazy and it's so funny because people say do you want him to be a musician and i'm like honestly i just whatever he wants to do whatever he finds that he loves like you know, I know a lot of people that like if they're like into sports or my kid has to do sports or I'm a musician. So my kids have to. I mean, if he wants to be a writer, I think that's cool. You know, has he been on stage with you um, when he was a baby? Yeah, yeah. like really, really little because we didn't have a nanny. But now, like, no, we, I mean, like seeking harmony with you or anything. He's not at that level yet. And okay. he's but, only four. And if we bring our kids to our shows, it is honestly like total chaos like even so if they chaos. come to watch it's horrible but there's this theme park that we play at in missouri called silver dollar city um, yeah. every year and um he'll sometimes like introduce us like this yeah. is my mom and dad and then we'll play and it's, it's pretty cute <laughs> so uh let's talk about the the schoolie itself so it, yeah. obviously it's equipped to house three adults and two kids <laughs> mostly and uh you know i know you have lithium batteries on it now um you didn't in the previous class C though. No, and even when we first built this bus, we got AGM batteries because that was what, I don't, somebody suggested that we do that because it was like a lot more cost effective. And we were like, oh yeah, I think that's what we had in our RV. So we'll just, we'll just do it in this bus. And um, we'd heard of lithium batteries from some people that we followed, but we were like, is it really like worth it? Is I don't that know. the winds? <clears throat> no. Uh, no, uh, though they, that's what they do too. Navigation uh, Nowhere. Navigation Nowhere, Mike. Mike. Um, would, would talk about them and um, he That actually, was always like the dream. We were like, someday we'll achieve Battleborn batteries. <laughs> but we like, we were just trying to save some money. So yeah, and which is funny because we ended up spending more money because we had to get rid of them. Oh and my do gosh. Them anyway. It was crazy. We were, it was our first cold night in the bus. We'd only been in it for a few months and we went up to upstate New York and we had two AGM batteries and <clears throat> we'd had our system hooked up and like we'd been using it. Everything was like, it was fine. I mean, the batteries didn't last for very long. We had to use our generator or whatever, but we were used to that because of the RV. And this one night, I'm like, I was pregnant with our daughter and I had to get up to go to the bathroom for like the 50th time. And I was like, I smell something. And Shane was like, I don't, I don't smell anything. I think it might just be your nose. I think he thought it was because I was pregnant. I was just like smelling things. I was also Which, tired. I'm like, was, who cares? Like, I don't care what happened. It was happened. like two in the morning or something. And I was like, no, I really think I smell something. And I like walked out and I opened our utility closet 
and there was like smoke coming out of the battery compartment and our inverter was smoking and like Shane went outside and he called Mike from Navigation Nowhere and Mike answered which is crazy because he's really busy and he walked Shane through how to like properly disconnect everything but what had happened was it was so cold that they froze and when they freeze then they melt so our batteries were literally melting in the compartment and I'm serious like they were it was all about to catch fire like it was one step away if I had gone back to sleep it probably would have caught on fire because there were no safeties on our system and we didn't even know that that happened like AGM batteries like if you run them below 50 percent then they're shot like you can't even barely use them anymore and you can't be in cold temperatures like yeah you know I've, I've heard yeah why do they I mean, make you're them? telling like a battery expert over here. <laughs> why do they, no you probably don't know this right. but why do they put those in RVs it's because it's cheaper it's but I'm like cheaper. not in the long it's, run it's also just that's the way it's been done for decades and so do you yeah. remember when we were in our RV and we had AGM batteries in there, we had to replace one of them and the guy didn't even know how to hook them up properly. And I think he, he like hooked them up backwards and our radio in our RV had been broken for like six months. Oh, I forgot about this. <laughs> Shane, Shane turns on the RV. No, no, no. So, so first, well, he went to put them on and there was this huge spark, like a <laughs> and then our radio started working. The, the RV wouldn't turn on, but the radio turned on. And we were all like, what is happening right now? It made no sense. No sense. It was crazy. And so anyway. so it was that week we went down to see Mike because he's based in that area. And we were like, dude, you have to fix this because we're living in this thing. And like that can never happen again. So we ordered our first Battle Born batteries and he installed them and like rebuilt our solar wall with like the proper components and stuff like that. And I remember just being like, it was, it was like night and day. Like the fact that we knew if we ran our batteries all the way down, it was not the end of the world. Like you just recharge them and use them the next day. And we lived with just two of those batteries for like a year and a half in our bus. And I mean, that's only 200 amp hours, but like we were able to survive and get by, but man, it all changed last winter when we got three more 500 amp hours. And we were like, oh my gosh. We're like living We're like kings. I'm like, I can run my blender all day if I want to. It was so, it was amazing. Total game changer. And like, I'll just, I'll never forget that night because seriously, our bus was this close to like burning down to the ground because of those AGM batteries. So. Well, that, I mean, I'm sorry that happened. Uh, you know, that's not the usual reason people switch over, but you know, <laughs> we I'm, had gl- to. I'm, I'm glad that you've got a, a good system working now. So um, before we end, I thought, I'd love to do another song with you guys because you know what? Not totally. not everyone come comes on the podcast and plays music with me. So, um, what do you want to do? One, two, one. Two. On the road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. Life I love is making music with my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again On the road again Going places that I've never been Seeing things that I may never see again I can't wait to get on the road again On the road again Like a band of seas we go down the highway Best of friends, insisting that the world keeps turning our way, and our way is on the road again. Well, I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Across the desert, spare man. I breathe the mountain air, man. I travel, I've had my share, man. Well, I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. Desert's bare, man. I breathe the mountain air, man. Travel, I've had my share, man. No, I've been everywhere. On the road again, like a bear in the seas, we go down the highway. We're the best of friends, insisting that the world keeps turning our way. And our way is on the road again. On the road again, I 
can't wait to get on the road again Life I love is making music with my friends I can't wait to get on the road again Go team! Nice. We have a new band. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode, and I'd like to thank my guests today, Emily and Shane from Arbor Season. Be sure to subscribe to the Limitless Energy Podcast on any of your favorite podcast platforms. That was the one. (laughs) 